raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Nelson Aldrich Rockefeller. I, Nelson Aldrich Rockefeller. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. On which I am about to enter. On which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. a special permission for someone not a member of the Senate to address the Senate, and the procedure will now be for uh, Senator Byrd, the acting majority leader, after uh, Vice President Rockefeller signs in, be the procedure for Senator Byrd to ask unanimous consent for Vice President Rockefeller to address the uh, assembly. Following uh, the governor's uh, words, which are not expected to exceed uh, four or five minutes, there will be a semi-public reception down the hall, although it cannot be considered a public one because the Capitol was secured this afternoon. Uh, getting ready Senate, for the come to order. The Senate of West Virginia is recognized. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the Vice President of the United States be permitted to address the Senate at this time. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, protest, President Pro Tem Eastland, Mr. Chief Justice, your Excellencies, the member of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished guests, and fellow Americans. As I stand before you, I feel a great sense of humility. I feel a great sense of gratitude for the privilege of serving the country I love. I feel a deep sense of gratitude to President Ford, to the Congress of the United States, and to the people of America. To the President for his trust and confidence and the opportunity he has given me to serve this great nation in working with him. A man for whom I have profound respect, admiration, and warmth of affection, a man of integrity, <clears throat> sincerity, openness, dedication, a man bearing the lonely burdens of the presidency with deep human understanding and total devotion to his country. And my admiration to the First Lady Betty Ford, and her great warmth and her courage. And if you'll forgive me for a personal note, my love and admiration to my own gallant wife, Happy. I feel deeply grateful to the committees and the members of the United States Senate and the House of Representatives for their confirmation of my nomination. 
Among the many reasons, I look forward with pride and with keen anticipation to serving the Senate as their presiding officer is the fact that my mother's father, my grandfather, Senator Nelson W. Aldrich, represented the great state of Rhode Island in this very chamber for 31 years after serving for three years in the House of Representatives. The thoroughness with which the Congress exercised its responsibilities on behalf of the American people under the 25th Amendment has been another dramatic evidence of the enduring strength and vitality of our Constitution and our unique American system. I've learned a great deal from this experience of the past four months. And I've come out of it with an even greater respect for the Congress of the United States. A more profound appreciation of the collective wisdom of the American people as expressed through the Congress. And a deeper understanding of the breadth of the responsibility to the people of this great free land that falls upon those of us in positions of public trust. I deeply appreciate the outstanding work of all those in government agencies involved in the investigation and preparation of material for the congressional committees. I admire and respect the vigilant coverage of the free American press, radio, and television through which the people of America were so well informed. I would like to thank all of those citizens who participated directly in the process by expressing themselves to their representatives in the Senate and in the House, and to those who sent words of encouragement to Happy and to me. And finally, especially to you, Mr. Chief Justice, my thanks for your administrating the oath and symbolizing as you do the rule of law by which this great republic functions. In this, or this is a period in which our country faces tremendous difficulties and unprecedented problems, both at home and abroad. Problems that affect every section of our country and every family in America. But there is nothing wrong with America that Americans cannot write. I pledge myself to the fullest limit of my capacity to work with you, Mr. President, and the Congress in the great task of building the strength of America to meet the grave new problems which we confront as a nation and as a people. I thank you.